Welcome to a new video series about deploying SDBranch from scratch. My name is Mitchell and in this video series I'm going to cover the deployment of a SDBranch architecture based on real life deployments. This architecture is powered by the Aruba Cloud Platform, which many of you might know as Aruba Central. And I'll run you through some of the key concepts of it. Aruba Central is able to manage, monitor and optimize the Aruba infrastructure such as switches, APs and gateways. More importantly, it provides insights about the performance of the network and alerts the administrator in the case of any deviations in network or user quality. Furthermore, Central is capable of profiling IoT, Corp and guest devices to clear pass device insight. With Aruba NetInsight, Central makes continuous automated improvements for the wireless network. But as I said earlier, Aruba Central is based on the Aruba Cloud Platform and here you see the different terms laid out. So let's start with software-defined LAN, or SD-LAN in short. Central manages and monitors the Aruba AP switches and gateways, and from the branch to the data center, that's the part uh, that we call the transport layer. And this is transport independent, so this can be either MPLS, LTE, or internet, and this is what we call SD-WAN. Altogether, it is grouped to SD-Branch, and this solution is completely managed through the single pane of glass of Aruba Central. Diving into the SD-Branch architecture, there are various forms of how SD-Branch is deployed. One thing that they all have in common is that they are managed through Central, which takes care of the zero-touch provisioning as well as the monitoring, configuration management and software updates. A large enterprise location would have multiple switches, APs and redundant gateways with a high degree of redundancy. Hence the multiple switches, double branch gateways and multiple internet links for fallback uh, such as 4G. It's also possible to deploy just the branch gateway solely without any connectivity to the data center and making use of the SD-WAN component. But most of the times the connection is made to the data center. And an important concept here is that both branch gateways are active within the Aruba infrastructure. So for example, uh, even though branch gateway 2 might uh, be the VRP backup uh, for the LAN, it could still uh, be passing through traffic to its own uh, internet uplink from uh, through branch gateway 1. So traffic can be sent directly to the internet uh, from the branch gateway, or it can be sent to the data center, but for example also uh, sent directly to a virtual private cloud uh, in AWS, Google or Azure. It's also possible to inspect the traffic of specific users and applications for data loss prevention or malware through our cloud security partnerships. Traffic is then sent from the branch directly uh, to these cloud services. In terms of sizing a branch gateway uh, for a branch, there can be uh, different models uh, used, but for example, also multiple or just one uplink. So it really depends on the scenario. Um, for smaller sites, you could also just use one gateway instead of a redundant pair. Uh, and for really small locations, so let's say under 25 uh, devices or users, there is a solution that we call the micro branch which is basically a remote access point with extra uh, wired ports to connect an additional printer or um, an extra switch and then connect those particular users and devices uh, to the internet but also to the data center. So now it's time to cover the topology. In the course of this video series, I'll be covering the different types of branches such as a full SD branch setup uh, or the micro branch that I've just discussed uh, and also the remote uh, VPN worker. These branches will connect to a single data center with two VPNCs. And these two VPNCs are layer three separated from each other and have their own IP spaces for the internet and the MPLS lines. It is important to note that every uh, link uplink uh, with Aruba and a branch gateway, whether this is MPLS or internet, is that each link uh, will be active. So if we have two branch gateways with each of them, an active uh, internet line and MPLS line, there will be four VPN tunnels to, for example, uh, one VPN concentrator. So if we have two VPN concentrators, it's going to be eight. But let's start with the basics. First, we'll onboard a branch and then start with the VPNC to get the infrastructure up and we'll take it from there. The first step is to create an Aruba Central account and we can do that by going to networking and then click on try Aruba Central for free. You can either start a demonstration right away without uh, any type of registration, but then you won't be able to add your own devices. 
In order to uh, create your own account, you can click on Gun Aruba AP Start Your Trial here. It'll take you down to a uh, registration page where you can fill in your information, but please be sure to uh, click the right server details. So if you're based in the European Union, you might want to select the EU for better performance in terms of latency. And here you can click on network operations in order to enable the network monitoring and management uh, app on Central. To agree to the terms and then sign up. Like this and Aruba Central will send you a verification mail. And I'll just move the link over here. And now we're all set. I can log into the portal and you can enable single sign-on later on if you'd like to do so for your own domain. And when the, fir the first time that you will log into your, new York, into your new account, you can enable the wizard um, and continue with the trial for 90 days. Or if you have a valid subscription key, add that right away. For now, um, if you uh, have a new account and you bought uh, new hardware, you would already see some devices connected to your account. Now I don't have a valid purchase order, so I have the option to add my devices manually to a serial number and a MAC address. And it will try to add them as well and it will give you any error messages for example if the device uh, already exists into another account it will say that the device is blocked and that you cannot use it and you may want to reach out to Aruba technical assistance in order to check that one out but for now I've just added my branch gateways and VPN concentrator into the uh, into the account and I'll click on done and over here you see the different types of models and now it's time to assign some groups uh, to these branch gateways and we'll I'll explain the notion of groups um, later on in this video course but now I'll just uh, create some groups for these devices so I'll create a group called ABC data center and I'll fit it, fill in a password for these devices And I'll create a group for the branch location. Now that I've created a group, it's time to create a location. And that's under the sites and labels over here. I'll click on the new site and I'll call this ABC branch one and I'll copy some information over here click on add and then as well a new data center location data center one all right so now that I've created these locations, it's time to create an installer. So the idea before this is that um, we will delegate the installation process to an installer, which will scan the devices and then the zero touch provisioning process will happen after we've done the configuration. So I'll head over to install manager and I'll create a new installer. I'll fill in my number, which is valid till the, uh, till the installation's been done, January 1, 1. And all locations will be installed by this particular user. Now, when I save this, I'll receive a message on my phone.
So now that we have our locations over here, I can select the ABC branch. For example, if I need to navigate to that particular location, I can see there's a 22 minute drive. For now, I'll select this particular location and click on the scan device button. And it will try to focus on the serial number. Within the installer app, there's also the possibility to add any installer notes or a specific photo of the installation. So I can take a picture and now I will repeat the process for the other branch gateway for the 9004 uh, to add that to the system as well. So now that we have completed the installation on the app, let's head over to the site installation. And sure enough, we can see our uh, branch over here with one gateway assigned and its license. We can see the image over here. And now it's time to add a group that we've just uh, created to assign that to this particular group. We'll state over here for the ABC branch. So this means that the group holding the configuration um, will be attached to this particular location when this device checks in. Over here you can see that the group has changed. I'll head over to the data center and click on this data center link as well. So the next thing that we can do is we can set a firmware level for these uh, devices to when they check in. So if we'll head over to the gateways and have the all devices selection over here, we can set that every device when it initially checks in will um, upgrade to this particular version. So as you can see, you can have either uh, a specific build or you can choose from uh, many builds um, that you want to standardize on. But for now, I'll just click on this particular version. Uh, and this will be the version that we'll, we will standardize on during this course. And that's a wrap. This was the first video of the SD branch from Scratch Videos. We've covered the concepts and main functions of Aruba Central. We created an account and set the foundation for configuring the devices as well as add them to the system as an installer. In the next video, we'll cover the configuration of the branch. Per the usual, I hope you found it informative. If you want to receive updates and would like to see more of these videos, like or subscribe and feel free to leave any questions or comments below this video.